All right, children, it's time for another shill review, book review, manga review, whatever the heck you want to call it. It's time for one, because every Tuesday I'm doing a volume of book review on Mashoko Tensai. Last week I did volume two, and this week I'm doing the manga of volume three. Oh god, I hate that fucking glare. I think I do it, yep. Here's the volume in all its glory, and here's... Back part, all that stuff. Good, good, good. Skeletons in the closet. Now, <clears throat> before I get into it, I have to say is volume two and three upside down. It goes together. Why does it go together? Because volume two and three makes up for volume two in the web novels. So already then and there, they were able to put this much detail into two volumes of the manga. I highly appreciate that right there. The fact that they were able to put that much detail into volumes. I'm grateful for that. I really am. You know, the first one is about him trying to get along with Eris, you know, taming the shrew, you could call it. And the second one is now how their relationship furthers up. And the thing I do like about the volumes that I caught on is that the, the characters that's shown, of course, in the volumes will pretty much be the focal point for each volume. So I do appreciate that a lot, you know. So... This one didn't have many important things into it because it was just concerning toward the end, only toward the end. But other than that, it um, showed the character growth between Rudius and Eris, as Rudius teaches Eris the more ways of being a noble AT. And there's also one part about his teacher, Roxy, and what she goes through as well. In fact, um, besides. The party, um, with Eris, it's just parties. Reason Eris is just parties. First, you're celebrating Eris' 10th birthday, then you're celebrating Rudy's 10th birthday. And that's pretty much it, in a way. And, um, the first part is Eris' 10th birthday, where she doesn't know, like, she doesn't want to do dancing because, you know, um, she's not good at it. And we've all been through there, where we're, we don't want to try stuff, but we know we're not good at it. A lot of people don't like to do stuff that they're not familiar with, or they know they, they really suck at. So, I believe you should at least try. Give it a try, give it another world, and we're having time to fail, and at least put some effort into it. And that was the, um, one of the things I did like about that, the character growth, where you have, there's more than one ways to do things in life. So, if you can't do it one way, try to do it another way, as long as you get there. So, I appreciate that much. Ruiz's birthday... It was, there's a little focal point in there that people didn't agree with, which I can see why. But then you understand that this is during the times of medieval times of noble blood. So they would do whatever they can to get power and for their bloodline to become stronger. So they would do that to children back in the past, unfortunately, but that is the truth. So despite how disturbing some scenes are in the book, I do appreciate the realism they put into it and stuff like that. So that was really nice. So, what about Roxy? What does Roxy have to do with this? Well, Roxy gets her own side story. In fact, a very interesting woman is in this. A woman I've never seen before, actually. Um, at least when I was reading the web novels. I read the web novels, like, freaking four times already. And I'm not reading the fifth time because in May, the first volume comes out in America. So, yay, can't wait for that shit. But there's this new character that's in here that I have never seen before. She plays a guitar, and all she does, she, I think, here she is, here she is, yeah, here she is. She plays a guitar, and she never shows her face, just her nose and mouth. She never shows her eyes, and she plays a guitar. I have never seen this character ever in the web novels. So I'm like, who is she? I, I don't know what important she has. I know she tells stories, she was telling a story of Roxy and how she was in this, she was in love within the ideal of love, you know. She had this crazy fantasy that one day she'll find love within the labyrinth because she's an S-rank adventurer, so she's so good at she can do a labyrinth all by herself, no party needed whatsoever. And she wishes the one day that she'll find someone that will rescue her inside of the labyrinth one day, and she'll believe that they'll become her ideal partner. So like that. So she has her own personal feminine dreams, which is nice for her. But other than that, there's this thing called this religion that I never mentioned in the first volume, but there's this religion going on with Roxy and her pure 
whiteness. They call it Roxyism, and apparently it's been existing way before Rudy was even born, so that's very that's good to know. But yeah, the, the power of Roxyism is, is very strong. It's a very hidden religion that's going on. So, other than that, towards the volume doesn't have any true meaning, only towards the end. The other stuff was good too, you know, character development, understanding the characters and their viewpoints, their goals, and stuff like that. That's good. But the real important thing doesn't happen until the very end. In fact, it's um, it's something that is so important that it will affect the characters even when they're in their adult ages, whether like past their twenties and stuff. That's how big the impact of that event happens. I'm not gonna say what happens because I want you guys to read it for yourselves. But it's a very important event that does happen within the story. So and it does really does change the characters for better or worse. I'm gonna say that. All I'm going to say is this, not everyone's going to get a happy ending out of this. Not everyone. This does change the entirety of the story. It will change how people see things, how people look, how people are. It does change stuff. So there's that. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it like that or anything like that. So besides that, um, of course, at the end of every volume, there is an, a side story. This the, the first every volume, there's two kind of side stories. There's one where it's written out by the main creator of the series, where he tells a perspective of someone within the story that doesn't have much of a spotlight within the manga series. Then there's a side story talking about somebody else, but through regular manga formation. The first one about the written out side story is by Eris' father, Phil, and how what he was going through when he lost his two sons, and um, how his um, cousin appeared out of nowhere and asked him for help because he got his he got his, he got Zenith pregnant, which is Rudy's mother, and Paul. And speaking of Paul, Paul wasn't always a, Paul isn't a very decent guy. I think I said this before, but Paul did some very indecent things to people in the past. And when he was a child, he was a bully. And then we went to Sword Academy. He forced himself on Pawn, the maid girl, which you read in Volume One. And then he was messing around with three of the women in his party, and then he got one of them pregnant, which is Brutus' mother, and they ended up getting married. But even after that, when Zenith was pregnant the second time, he was fooling around again with the maid. So the guy can't control himself. He really can't, and he need to be put on a freaking leash. So it does go into um, ways where Paul was trying to use um, Rudy... Well, Phil was trying to use Rudy as a as a noble chip, as a political chip to further himself within the family. So there's that. And then the second person that they talk about is Zenith, actually, Rudy's mom. How she takes um, what's happening. How she's raising two daughters. One of them came from her and one of them came from the maid. So she's going through how she feels about the entire situation. How... Originally, if you found out your your husband cheated and didn't impregnate the woman he cheated on, you would ask both of them to leave, the husband to leave, or you ask the woman he cheated on to leave. He cheated with to leave. That usually happens. But she decided to keep them both there and raise the children together, which in that world, it's natural to have more than one wife. So Paul does end up marrying the maid, too. She's the second wife. So the way Rudy has two moms and one dad and two sisters, and it pretty much tells perspective of how she views it, how she was so angry and felt betrayed and stuff like that. But um, it was for Rudy himself um, doing what he did. She forgave them and decided to move on. So there's that. So yes, that is my struggle tensei volume three. I do appreciate how they split up Volume 2 into two volumes to explain much as detail as they can with the growth between Brutus and Aerith. Because the next adventure is where things start to get serious. And I can't wait to tell you guys about that. But anyway, that's all I got for this video. I really am enjoying this right now. You know, um, I've already read all the way up to date today, but I enjoy reading it in my hands. And there really is a different kind of experience when you're reading a manga in your hands then you're reading it online. You know, you have appreciation of the books, you buy the artwork, and of course there's some content detail in there that you don't get by reading stuff only online.
there's some stuff that they don't put in there unless you're reading ebooks from Amazon, but that's it. So, anyways, that's what I got for this review. This was a very good book, you know. Um, it was just it was just further detail within the characters. It was just the main important stuff happens towards the end of the volume. And other than that, that's very good. So I can't wait to tell you guys about the next volume until next week. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys give Mashoko Tensai a try. The volumes are actually pretty cheap on Amazon. I want to go check them out because on Barnes and Noble they'll sell them for like what thirteen to twelve dollars on um, Books a Million or something. But online you can actually get them cheaper on paperback. So yeah, so if you ever want to check that out, go and do so. I'd be a much obliged, of course, writer. And one more thing I want to talk about. <clears throat> as you know, as you know, um, I said before, um, a sentence of a bookworm. I told you guys to go read that, and because it's also getting an anime. But also, a Tyria, another good isekai that's also getting an anime this year is coming out. Plus, um, I also checked the listings of the top light novels in certain competitions. Apparently, a sentence of a bookworm has been hitting those number one charts and sold millions of copies. So that's freaking amazing for them. But however, Mashako Tensai has been up on that list for years, longer than most of the novels, with popularity and good sales, but yet no anime adaption. What the heck, man? I've actually, um, I saw some comments when I was looking at it, when I was done looking at the list, because I was surprised. I looking at other competitions in the past, of so 2017 and 16, well, Shuckle Tensai has always been in the top 10, even in the top 5. But yet, people are saying, this has been up there the longest and been doing so well, despite how many years it's been going, but yet, no sign of a freaking anime. I, I don't get it. I thought if you support a product, it will get an anime. I thought if, if you buy the stuff, if it does well in sales, it will get an anime. Where is my anime? Tell me. <coughs> anyway, that's all I got. No more, I promise you this time. This is it. Now, I'm about to do a must-watch. Yeah, that's right. I haven't done a must-watch in a while since Sundays Without God. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Mushoko Tensai Shilling. And I hope you get ready for the next one next week on Tuesday. I have been in background. Sign out.